What's up guys, it's Eric from Rare Candy, and today we're taking a look at another new deck that Fates Collide is going to give us. Uh, before we get into deck profile, I just want to say uh, sorry for the lack of content recently. Uh, I'm actually just getting over being sick, so we had a bunch of different videos planned for this past week, and I uh, just wasn't able to you know, record the commentary just because I was sick and whatnot. So just want to give you guys a little update on that. But anyways, so let's just uh, jump right into the deck. Uh, everything, you know, we should be putting out videos like normal from, from here on out. Okay, so there's a bunch of different ways to build these metal decks. Um, you know, there's kind of like the toolbox variant that we did a deck profile on uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, you know, there's more Genesect heavy versions. So, but for this one, we're taking a look at Lugia and Lugia Break. This is kind of a, a card I, I remember we had some requests to do a video for. So, I figure we'll try to build a a metal deck based around Lugia as our main attacker. So for the regular Lugia, it's 120 hit points and it has the ability pressure. As long as this Pokemon is your active, any damage done to him by your opponent is reduced by 20. So that's really cool because it effectively gives uh, Lugia 140 hit points in terms of them taking one hit knockouts on you. And also has the attack intensifying burn for three colorless energy. It does 60 plus 60 more if your opponent's uh, active is an EX. So if you guys played in like the, I think the 2012, 2013 format, this card will look very similar to the old Bouffalon that we had that also saw some play. Uh, pretty much the same stats for the most part. Same ability and attack. So uh, lugia has got a lot of good things going for it. The attack is really nice because it two shots pretty much every EX in the format, maybe other than like Waylord. But pretty much any standard Mega or regular EX, Lugia will be able to two-shot, which is, is really nice. And it also does one-shot Shamans, so that's really cool as well. Uh, for the weakness, it has Lightning Weakness, which is kind of annoying because that does mean Joltik can knock this guy out fairly easily. Uh, but the Fighting Resistance is nice, especially because Zygarde is kind of a hyped card going into this new uh, format that we're going to have for Nationals and, and such. Um, and just the two retreat costs, which not not the worst thing ever, because we do play four DCE in this deck, so it is we will be able to retreat when we want to most of the time. So Lugia, just on his own, is actually I think a very underrated card from this set, but we're kind of taking a look at him for the break. Yeah, this is what kind of the whole deck is going to be based around. So we have Lugia break, 150 hit points, and that is amazing because Lugia Break still retains the uh, pressure ability from the standard Lugia. So that essentially makes Lugia a 170 hit point non-EX stage one, basically. <laughs> and that, that, is, that is crazy good. I mean, if you look at the other breaks, we have, you know, Greninja, that's another popular one, and even Trevenant. And uh, like take Greninja, for example, it's 170 hit points, but it's essentially a stage three. But Lugia, like we said, it only has to evolve from one form. So it's effectively a stage one with 170 hit points um, with the ability that we're talking about. So that that is just really, really good on its own. So you'll be able to deny prizes and, you know, have a good prize exchange against maybe more EX heavy decks. And also Lugia has the attack Flash of Destruction, does 150 damage for four colorless, and you discard two energy attached to him. So since we are playing Bronzong in this deck, we will be able to keep recycling these uh, metal energies that we're going to be discarding. Uh, 150 is kind of a decent number as well, because it knocks out most stage two Pokemon and uh, with a muscle band, you also knock out a lot of non-Fighting Fury belted EXs. Uh, since it boosts the damage up to 170 and also can knock out Greninja's like we were just saying too So the numbers that the attack hits for are really nice And if you can't one-shot something you always have the regular Lugia's attack as well that way you don't have to discard the energy So uh, I think this is a fairly solid non ex attacker um, You know the first batch of Fates Collide tournaments have only kind of started recently, so it's hard to say how great this will be but i think based on the testing i've had with this it seems like a solid idea though so let's take a look at the rest of the pokemon we have two shaman ex pretty standard for most decks uh, we're just using it for the ability setup 
So whenever you bench shame and you draw until you have six cards in your hand. And since we are playing four DCE, there might actually be instances where we can use it to tax Sky Return as well. So, you know, if we have, you know, our board just clogged up with shamans and maybe some stuff we don't want, we can use Sky Return and put it back in our hand. Or maybe even save it from being knocked out as well. Okay, so we're also playing a 1-1 Zorark in this deck as well. So we're mainly using Zorark for its ability, stand-in. Once during your turn before you attack, uh, you may basically switch Zorark to the active spot. So that's really nice because whenever you use Lugia's Flash of Destruction attack, you have to discard the energy, and you can't accelerate that energy back onto Lugia uh, while he's in the active spot. So if you have Zorark, you can use stand-in. Uh, that way, your Lugia goes to the bench, and you can you know power him back up with your Bronzongs and free retreat with Floatstone on your Zorark to put Lugia back up in the active spot. So Zorark's really nice. It allows for some uh, extra mobility and uh, flexibility when choosing who you want to power up with your Bronzongs. And the attack is actually really good too. I have to be honest, Lugia is not a good attacker whatsoever against Trevnik, and Trevnik is def definitely one of the most popular decks. And uh, Zorak is a nice little extra backup attacker that you can use to maybe take a couple quick knockouts on some Trevnets while you set up the rest of your board. Um, because it does have the attack Mindjack for just a DCE, there's 30 more for each of your opponent's benched Pokemon. So this is a good attack on its own. Um, in most cases, we probably want to save our Zorark. That way we can, you know, do the whole stand-in and free retreat thing with Floatstone. But if you do need to attack, Mindjack is solid. And like we said, against Trevna, I think you will have to resort to using Zorark at some point, probably. So, great card. I like this in, in most metal decks in general. But I think especially uh, with Lugia, uh, I think it's really good too. And so for the last of our attackers, we're going to have one Age of Slash EX. So we're, we're pretty much using Age of Slash because of its ability Mighty Shield. You prevent all damage done to him by attacks of your opponent's Pokemon with special energy on them. So Lugia, not a very efficient attacker against Night March, for example. That's another very, very popular deck. And so all they need is one attachment to knock out your Lugias. And your Lugia needs... Uh, you know, three or maybe even four energy to use Flash of Destruction if they have like a Fighting Fury belted uh, Mew or Pumpkaboo or something like that. So four energy to knock out like a, a 90 or 80 or 60 hit point Pokemon with a Fighting Fury belt, uh, it's just not that good. Um, you're definitely going to be behind in the prize exchange. And playing a card like Aegislash is really nice because it, it, it might buy you a couple of turns to take a couple knockouts with this guy before they can actually respond and take out your Aegislash themselves. So great against Night March, and also pretty much auto wins the Vespaquin Vileplume matchup as well. So great card. Uh, I really like it in this in this list. Oh, I totally forgot to talk about the attack as well. <laughs> so Slash Blast, Slash Blast, I'm getting tongue tied here. <laughs> it does 40 plus 20 more for each Metal Energy on him. So Solid attack as well. Um, you can two-shot a lot of things with, with him. But like I said, we're mainly using him to abuse the Mighty Shield ability. Okay, and then since this is a Bronzong deck, we are going to need to play Bronzongs. Um, quick point, I do want to point out we have the new Bronzor that we're playing from Face Collide. Uh, the reason we're choosing this one, it has 60 hit points. The attack Iron Defense can buy you a turn if you're having a slow setup. And also, even though the retreat is two on this Bronzor, as opposed to the one from Phantom Forces, we do play four DCE. So we do have, you know, in combination with that and all of our switching cards, I think it'll be easy to get him out of the active spot if we have to. So that's why we're opting to play uh, this one. So kind of the heart of the deck here is going to be Bronzong. Uh, it has the ability Metal Links. Once during your turn before you attack, you may attach a Metal Energy from your discard pile to one of your bench Pokemon. So he's kind of the lifeblood of the, the deck, and he makes it so that we constantly have attackers to use every turn. So even if we have to discard Energy with Lugia, we can always power him back up with Bronzong. And I think it's important to note we are playing the Metal Fortress Bronzong as well. It's, and I think this is a very important card in this Lugia break deck. Uh, so it ha has the ability Metal Fortress, like I said, you prevent all effects of your opponent's attacks, including damage done to your benched Pokemon. And this is very, very important because, like we were saying, Lugia has 
it, it's just not a very good attacker against the Trevenant Break deck. So if you're playing Bronzong, uh, like specifically this Bronzong, I should say, um, if you get it into play, all of their bench damage that they do with Silent Fear, it's gone. And they have to only basically do uh, 30 damage to your active Pokemon, or they have to do Tree Slam to just do 60 without the uh, bench damage. So it, it takes away all of, I guess, what makes Trevenant uh, a decent attacker. And another thing Trevenant decks like to do, they like to Lysander up like a big Pokemon, you know, that has like a big retreat cost like Bronzong or Aegislash, and they like to use the attack Silent Fear and spread damage on your whole board while you have this big Pokemon that can't retreat. Uh, but like I said, since we're playing this one, it kind of takes that option out of the game for them if you can get this guy in play. So really good card, it really helps a lot with that matchup as well. And that's it for the Pokemon line. I will say this, if you guys can find room for a third Metal Lynx Bronzong, um, definitely do so. Uh, it kind of hurt me to only play two in this list, because uh, typically you want to play three Bronzongs in most decks. So if I could find space for a third one, that is another card I do want to fit in here, maybe down the road. But yeah, guys, that's it for the Pokemon line. I'm generally pretty happy with it. And so let's start talking about the trainer cards. And we'll start with the supporter cards. So we're playing four Professor Sycamore, discard your hand, and draw seven. So this is really nice because not only is Sycamore just generally the best draw supporter in the game, but if we have to discard metal energies, it's actually a good thing because we can accelerate them out of the discard pile with our Bronzong. So we're going to opt to play a heavier count of Sycamore as opposed to N or something like that. Uh, nevertheless, though, we are still playing 2N. So each player shuffles their hand in their deck and draws equal to the amount of prize cards they have left. So this is really good, especially in the late game if you're down on prizes. You know, you can end your opponent down to maybe one or two cards and make a big comeback. And also in the early game, too, you know, if you have like a bunch of these evolution lines, because there are essentially three evolution lines in this deck, the Lugia, Zorak, and Bronzong, you might have parts of it in your hand that you don't want to sycamore. So there's some instances in the early game where N is actually, I think, a little bit more beneficial than Sycamore. So that's why I think it's still important to play a couple of, of, of this card. So we're playing two Lysander, switch your opponent's bench Pokemon with their active. So this is good just because, you know, you get to choose who you want to knock out. And since Lugia can take easy knockouts on Shamans, um, you know, that can be a strategy for you as well, since all of your attackers you know, are pretty much only giving up one prize other than the Age of Slash we play. Uh, if you can force your opponent to take six prizes while just picking off their Shamans, you can kind of clean up a game pretty easily sometimes that way. Okay, we're also playing one Bridget. So search your deck for one basic EX or three basic Pokemon and put them onto your bench. So I, I really like this card in this uh, list just because this is a more non-EX of, I guess, heavy version of Bronzong. Uh, it's not a card I'd probably play if we were talking about like the Genesect version or something like that, but since all of our main key components of the deck are non-EXs, I thought it was important to run maybe one or two of this card as well. So, because on the first turn you ideally want to get two Bronzors down, a Zerua, and a Tacker at least. So Bridget's just a card that we can help do that with, because we play Battle Compressor and Versus Seeker, so we can potentially compressor this card away on the first turn and, and, and start using it. And also, too, um, it's just nice because it lets us search out our Aegislash against Vespaquin Vileplume without having to be reliant on like an item card like Ultra Ball. So it's kind of, kind of useful in that type of situation as well. Okay, and then for the last supporter, we're just playing one AZ. So Bronzong and Aegislash both have big retreat costs. Um, both are three retreaters, and like we're saying, Trevenant, for example, they like to Lysander up these, uh, you know, these these big heavy retreater Pokemon and kind of spread damage around them. And you know, Greninja decks can also do the same thing as well. Um, I know some some of those lists don't even play Lysander, but it's it's still something that you can maybe expect to happen against that type of deck. So AZ kind of helps us in those situations. Um, you can also heal Pokemon with it. So let's say you have a Lugia that's about to get knocked out. 
you can AZ it up, and even though you lose the energy that's on him, you can re-accelerate it out of the discard pile with your Bronzongs, and it also lets you reuse Shaman. So I think AZ is kind of a, a natural inclusion for pretty much any metal deck. Okay, and so moving into the uh, item cards, we're playing four versus Seeker. You know, just to reuse our supporters. And since we're playing Battle Compressor, it's kind of a no-brainer just to max this out at four copies. Okay, so we're playing four Ultra Ball. Discard two cards from your hand and search your deck for a Pokemon. Obvious synergy with Bronzong because we can discard our Metal Energies and, you know, get out a Pokemon that we want to get. Uh, three Trainer's Mail. So look at the top four cards of your deck. Pick a Trainer card you... A trainer card you find there and put it into your hand so this is really nice because it just helps us hit um, you know all of the different trainer cards right when we need them it'll help us draw into our float stones ultra balls supporters etc so uh, this is another one of those cards i would like to actually run four of but just due to space constraints in this list since you know like i said we're basically playing three evolution lines uh, so space is definitely a luxury here so Maybe if you can find space for the fourth one, by all means, go for it. Okay, we're playing two level ball. So all of the uh, Bronzongs and Bronzer line, it's searchable by level ball. Uh, Zerua is also searchable by level ball. And it's just really important that you get, I think, multiple Bronzors down on the first turn or two of the game. And I think just playing a couple extra search cards like this uh, really helps ensure that that, that happens. So we're playing two Battle Compressor. Since we've been talking about, the whole idea of the deck is to accelerate energy out of the discard. Compressor is just such a good card uh, because you can dump your metal energies in the discard. You can put supporters in the discard to reuse with Versus Seeker. It uh, just has a lot of synergy with everything that we're doing in this deck. Okay, we're playing one Escape Rope. So this is one of our switching cards that we're going to be using. Uh, it's really nice because, like we've been talking about, Lugia can uh, take knockouts on Shamans pretty easily. So if your opponent only has like an, an attacking Pokemon and then like a Shaman on the bench, you can escape rope and maybe take like an easy knockout with Lugia. So it's kind of nice because we can use it as a switching card and like a pseudo Lysander type of card as well. And uh, another uh, Pokemon that actually might give us a little bit of trouble is Glaceon EX. So it's a card that's been getting a little bit of hype here and there. There's been some like Mew Toolbox decks that run that and Jolteon. Uh, I think the Aqua Box deck as well also runs Glaceon. And um, other than Aegislash, we really don't have a non-evolution based attacker. So Escape Rope is nice because it will let us get out of Glaceon's um, you know, lock, and then we can Lysander it back up to attack it again. So I like Escape Rope here. And uh, we're also playing one Sacred Ash. So shuffle five Pokemon from your discard into your deck. So since we can already get Metal Energies out of our discard pile, I think Sacred Ash is probably better here. Just because it lets us get a lot of Pokemon, and we really don't want to take the energy out of our discard pile in most situations. Okay, and we're also playing one Startling Megaphone. And this is a card I think is actually pretty important uh, I know Megaphone is kind of like a luxury card in a lot of decks, um, you know, for decks that can manage to find the room for it. But I think it's especially important just because Fighting Fury Belt is so prominent right now, and it, it really messes up the math for a lot of our attacks. But so, yeah, like we were saying, Lugia can knock out Shamans in one hit, but if they throw a Fighting Fury Belt on it, we won't be able to knock it out in one hit for only three energy. It'll force us to use actually Lugia Break's attack with a Muscle Band. And that's just really annoying. And other things too, like if we want to knock out things like Minetric EX or, you know, other Pokemon EX that have 170 hit points, uh, we won't be able to take them out in one hit with our Lugias anymore. So uh, I love starting Megaphone in this list just because, like I said, it really helps with the, uh, the math for all of the attacks that we're doing. Okay, and then just for the tool cards, we are playing two Float Zone. So it gives free retreat to whoever it's attached to. So ideally, we want to get this down on our Zorark because uh, whenever you do that, it effectively gives everything in your deck free retreat. 
just because uh, Zora can use the ability stand in to go to the active spot and then retreat for free with Floatstone. So a really good card. And even if Zorak is prized, it's still good to get down on your um, you know, on your bronzongs, just in case someone tries to Lysander stall you. And for the last of our trainer cards, we're just playing two muscle band. So, like we were saying, if you have this attached to Lugia Break, um, his attack flash of destruction can hit for 170, which is a pretty important number, like I said, since there are EXs in the format that have 170 hit points. So this is really important to hit those numbers. Um, you know, and there's other situations too, like um, like Zorark, for example, you might be a little short of a one-hit knockout, uh, and you might have to throw down a muscle band on him in like a clutch situation just to uh, take a knockout. But mainly it's for Lugia Break, just to help him hit for 170. Okay, and then for our energies, we're playing four double colorless energy. Uh, pretty self-explanatory, Lugia attacks for colorless energies, and so does Zorark and Aegislash as well. Um, on Aegislash, it is better to have metal energies, but if you do need to just put up a wall and just start attacking and get some damage on the board, you can do so with double colorless energy all the same. So, maxing that out, and then just seven metal energies. Uh, seems like a good number. Um, with Bronzong, you, I don't think you really need more than this, just because you can keep recycling uh, all of your metal energies over the course of the game. But yeah, guys, so that is the Lugia Break deck. I'm going to switch over to the battle that we did with this deck and show you how it looks in action, okay? All right, guys, so it looks like we found the game. And we're just calling the coin flip, which we do win, which is really nice. And uh, I'm kind of curious. It, we might be playing against Dustin Zimmerman. Not sure, but uh, if so, what's up, man? <laughs> um, so I was wondering about that the whole time. So Dustin, if you're watching this, comment and let us know, because I'm curious. So anyways, here it looks like we're playing against some sort of fighting deck. Uh, Carbank Break with Metacham. And so I'm not really sure how to go about this, just because... Um, you know, Lugia's, to be honest, I don't think he's a great attacker against these non-EXs. Uh, he definitely benefits more from attacking uh, EX Pokemon. But nevertheless, um, we might be able to knock out this Metachamp, Metachamp on the next turn since he can't evolve right away. So here we're just going to Shaman. Uh, it is unfortunate we don't have a draw supporter. Oh, we do get Sycamore, so that's cool. And here, just deciding, do we want to... Put the float stone down and sycamore or okay so we're just going to opt to keep the um keep the sycamore for next turn it looks like uh, that's kind of that's kind of gross there um so yeah at least we do have the one of the breaks in hand for next turn ready to go and I think holding on to Megaphone is also kind of important against these fighting decks just because they typically play uh, either combinations of Muscle Band or Focus Sash like our opponent just grabbed. So there's a good chance that we could see a tool come down this turn. So I did want to hang on to it just in case. Okay, yeah, and we do see a Focus Sash come down on Metatite. So really important that we did save the Megaphone since we can actually get rid of that tool and take a knockout hopefully the next turn if we do get an energy. Okay, so we can get rid of that and then probably Ultra Ball away, maybe a break and a Lysander for a Bronzor, if I had to guess. Or maybe even a Zerua would be okay too, since we have the Float Stone in hand. So I, I kind of like the Zerua since we really don't need any additional energy immediately since this Lugia is already being close to being powered up and we're not really threatened of a knockout just yet so I, I do like the Zerua play here a little bit better and cool we do hit an Ultra Ball so that means we will be able to get down a Bronzor as well so actually really not a bad um, first two turns so far okay so just grab that guy guess I'm just debating if there's anything else, but I think Bronzor is the right thing to get here. Okay, and so yeah, we have Lugia totally powered up 
already and we're threatening um you know a big uh uh what's the gear breaks attack flash of destruction if he does evolve into something bigger uh that we can't knock out immediately and here oh my god this is this is actually really annoying parallel city because if, if you notice in our list we actually don't play any stadium cards and we don't play delinquent as well so we don't have a way to bump this stadium and that's very frustrating um since in you, you know we don't bench space is definitely a luxury in these metal decks because you usually want two bronzongs and a zora arc down at the least and so you have to figure you probably have a shaman somewhere on your board and then some attackers so this is going to be very problematic for us but luckily we're kind of putting on some pressure here he has the carving break which we can knock out on the next turn and uh we don't we don't even take any damage from it so we're still in an okay spot but this is definitely going to mess us up a little bit here um the other thing that's unfortunate is it it, we don't have any room for any other attackers, so that probably means that we're going to have to power up Zorg at some point as well and try to use him as an attacker, which we, we normally don't like to do. It's normally a card you want to save to you know, help you free retreat and stuff like that. Okay, so here we'll... Um, try to figure out which to grab here. Zorg will give us the option to retreat for free basically but i think this is fine we really don't have a need to get the uh the zorark out immediately so we're just going to meta links which honestly i think we probably should have waited uh just because we still have to play our supporter for the turn so we may have drawn into something different and here we can probably just sycamore away that that metal energy that seems fine Okay, and we still hit the Zorark, which is nice. But like I said, unfortunately, we don't have a bench space. We, we really want to get down another Lugia and start powering it up. So here we're just trying to figure out where we, where we want to attach. So I think uh, attaching to the active is fine just because we plan on using Flash of Destruction. And now we only need one more energy to uh, you know be able to use Flash of Destruction again. Uh, so uh, unfortunately, we do have this Shaman down, but luckily we do play AZ, and we can power up a Shaman to Sky Return if we need to get him off the board. Okay, and here we see an N. I guess I'm okay with that. There really wasn't much um, we were going to use there. Uh, he does get rid of both our Float Stones. That's, that's kind of uh, annoying, because those are only two that we play. So we're going to have a... You know, mobility is definitely something we don't have right now in this matchup. Uh, between the Parallel City and getting rid of our Float Stones like that, uh, our board is very, very clunky. <laughs> but luckily, we're still ahead in prizes, and, you know, this this Zygarde is going to struggle to, I think, take a knockout on our Lugia, since not only does it resist fighting, but it also has that ability pressure that reduces the damage even further. And uh, actually, next turn, if we want, we can actually Lysander up a Shaman, since I believe we discarded one, uh, and get an easy uh, prize with our Lugia. Or maybe even potentially, hmm, it's hard to say. We do have AZ. We could also heal our, our Lugia that way as well, just because it is really our only attacker. Because um, then if Lugia goes down, we're really not going to have... Uh, much to work with. So here, what are we going to do? That's the big question. And it looks like we're eyeing a mind jack. So we could potentially AZ up our Lugia break. And that way we can heal it. And then reattach a DCE to it and keep going but I don't know this is a very difficult situation um, I might almost prefer just retreating manually because as of right now it's gonna be hard to get enough energy on the Lugia break the following turn
Okay, so here, unfortunately, I do think we probably should have manually retreated because I think at the time I I didn't really think that, oh, once this Zorark gets knocked out, I'm not going to have a free retreat or two you know, promote that way we can metal links onto the, the Lugia. So, uh, unfortunately, that, that is a little tricky. I do think we misplayed here, if I had to be totally honest. And, you know, and, and forgetting about that, um, that we won't be able to use Flash of Destruction next turn, if I'm not mistaken. So, which means we should have played down that muscle band. So, I honestly think this was a really bad turn for us. I think just playing this deck, you're always kind of used to having something with a float stone to promote after something gets knocked out. Um, <laughs> I guess maybe I just forgot that I didn't have anything that I can promote after Zork gets knocked out. But, uh, so yeah, I, I think that definitely is a misplay there. Because right now we're gonna have to hit another DCE if we want if we want a chance to uh, knock this thing out. If I'm not mistaken. Well, actually, I don't know what I'm talking about. Zygarde only has 190 hit points. I think I think I thought he had like a Fighting Fury belt on him. Because right now Intensifying Burn will actually. Oh yeah, he used Cell Storm. That's what it was. So that's a little annoying because with a muscle band, we're actually still 10 damage short of knocking this guy out. So we really do need to hit um, our, uh, our, our uh, another double colorless energy because otherwise we're not going to do enough damage to actually knock this guy out. So here we'll probably just grab a Sycamore. That's probably the best thing to do. And, okay, so we discard Aegislash there as well. And unfortunately, we do whiff it, but maybe, I don't know. I, I don't think there's another way we can get one out because our, our other Shaman is in the discard already. So that is definitely annoying. You know, maybe in hindsight, another play we could have done was instead of Sycamore, we could have Lice... We could have benched our Age Slash EX and Lysandered up a Shaman for two prizes. Um, that way, if Lugia went down, we, we would have Age of Slash to wall against his Zygarde. So, I do think that one turn we really did mess up there, not uh, putting that Muscle Band down on our Zorark when we did that damage. And also, the uh, I, I, well, I think. The more important thing was using the AZ. I think that was a misplay since um, we were kind of hoping to hit a DC off that, that Sycamore otherwise. <laughs> so here, yeah, we do leave Zygarde with only 10 hit points. But luckily, Lugia still has 150 hit points and with his ability, um, 170 effectively. So I don't think we're going to be knocked out this turn unless like we see... A power memory come down on this Zygarde. So I do think we're going to be okay for a turn. But again, we, we, we just have to think. Once this Lugia goes down, we have we don't have any more attackers um, that we can send up. So maybe we should have played down the Aegislash. I don't know. I, I think I was maybe hoping to get a Lugia off the Sycamore or something instead just because Lugia is a little bit better of an attacker against uh, Zygarde. And, you know, Age Slash is also just kind of clunky to maneuver around since we don't have Zorark with Floatstone. Um, you know, if we ever had to promote it, it would probably be stuck in the active spot till it got knocked out. So Parallel City definitely makes, um, you know, makes choosing what to play a little bit harder here. <laughs> And we just have to think, what is our opponent going to do? I would imagine they're just going to hit us for, you know, probably 100. That seems probably like the best thing. Another thing he could do is maybe use Cell Storm, and that would take a, I think, a Sky Return play to knock out Zygarde out of the question as well. But I think just doing the 100, or 110, 
forgot about his uh, strong energies and such in the Regirock. Uh, I think that probably is better for him. And here you have to ask, what are we going to do? Um, we can play AZ or something like that. Uh, we can uh, we can Lysander stuff. And here, I think maybe I'm thinking about powering up this Shaman to do Sky Return. That way, it'll get the Shaman off the board. And here, yeah, I think I'm just in that same situation. Do I want to AZ or, you know, what, what do I want to do here? But I think it's better just to, yeah, do the Metal Inks, attach to the Shaman, and manually retreat. That way, we can keep it. Uh, an extra energy on this Lugia. Level ball, just to see, I think, what else is left in the deck. Uh, I guess we could grab that Bronze Ore. I don't know if we're going to. Apparently not. I think we probably should have just to thin the deck out a little bit more. So not a huge thing, but... Yep, and we'll just manually retreat. And that seems fine to me. Okay, and so now we have two energy on the Slugia. And what this means is we, and just sky returning like this, we might be able to potentially get the game next turn. Because um, we will be able to license her a Shaman. Oh, wait, we're going to have to promote somebody that isn't Lugia, hopefully. So I think we have to promote a bronze on here. Otherwise, Lugia is just going to get knocked out by probably Medicham. And this is where, you know, those Floodstones getting this card by that Megaphone really hurt us. Because now we have to basically wait for our opponent to knock us out or play something like AZ. But that we really don't want to use that as our supporter for the turn. And now we just have such like a clunky situation on our hands here because we don't want to Sycamore and discard all this stuff to draw into an escape rope. Um, we don't want N because uh, we'll only put ourselves at two cards. Um, you know, we don't want to AZ just because then we can't draw into extra stuff. So, okay, so I'm guessing we're going to see an N down to two. If I had to guess, yep. And okay, we did get a versus seeker, so that's good. We will that will give us an out to like a, a sycamore or something. Uh, and here, I really wish we they would have taken a knockout on our uh, on our bronze on, because then we could have just lysandered shaman for the game here. So <laughs> that really is unfortunate. We we weren't able to do that. Here, I think I'm just checking if I have metal in the discard, which I don't. So we're probably just going to. Probably just going to see us discard this with a Sycamore. Wait, I don't... Yeah, I don't know why I would be attaching there. Yeah, so I we should definitely Sycamore that Metal Energy away. And I guess we can probably attach to the benched Bronzong with that Muscle Band, just in case we do want to power it up to use Hammer in, if we have to for some reason. Okay, and um, so here, what, what are we going to do? I guess just keep powering up this Lugia. And luckily, we do have a free bench spot now, so we can start using Metal Inks to power up that one as well. So, yeah, that seems good to attach to that one. That way, in case our break gets Lysandered, we can start. You know, we already have another Lugia that we're working on being... Uh, powered up. So, but again, if uh, if only they had taken the knockout on the Spronzon, we would have been able to uh, <laughs> Lysander Shaman for the game last turn. That's kind of annoying there. And versus Seeker. Oh, okay, AZ. Alright, so he's taken the Shaman play kind of out of the out of the equation for us. That's that's kind of what we were hoping on. I mean, we can still trade favorably with something like a Regirock, but 
we were hoping to just be able to take like an easy prize on Shaman. Okay, so Yoga Kick will knock us out. And fortunately, we have to promote another Pokemon here. Uh, just because Medicham gets to attack twice with the Omega Barrage Ancient Trait. So it is 42 Arlugia. Uh, and luckily we do have some options here. Uh, we probably want a Trainer's Mail and Battle Compressor first. Okay, so we can take Sycamore. Just trying to think, do we want to N or Sycamore here? So our, it will put our opponent at a lower hand size, but we... That might be the best thing too, just because we only have six cards left in our deck, so. Um, so probably Compressor away, that and maybe a Bronzor. I don't see that being useful. We could maybe keep it in the deck just to prevent us from decking out potentially. And here I'm just kind of like debating what to do. We can maybe even keep the end, just, I don't know. So, I mean, it's, it still seems okay to me. And here we can attach to our active Lugia and, and then metal links to the benched one. That seems okay, I suppose. Uh, unfortunately, we will have to get another energy onto this bench Lugia to do Flash of Destruction. Uh, but the only thing that's unfortunate is he's kind of on the verge of being knocked out already. So it, it's very unfortunate we have to commit so much energy to a Lugia that's already about to get knocked out. Um, but, I mean, we can do kind of the same thing we just did, we can promote this Bronzong and basically power up our other Lugia break behind our Bronzong and let, and let this Bronzong get knocked out. Because we only need one more prize to seal the game. So if we can just, you know, two shot a Regirock or something, um, I, I think we'll be fine. And our opponent still needs four prizes. So I think we're still in an okay spot here. But um, so let's see what our opponent can do here. So it looked like they're using Battle Compressor. I'm not sure what they have in their discard at this point. I mean, they only have seven cards left in their deck, so. Okay, it looked like they got rid of Sycamore, and I couldn't tell what the other cards were, but probably just some stuff they don't need at this point anymore. Okay, so here we do promote the Bronzong. I, I don't really know what else we could do here. Um, so we get the Metal Energy, the Metal Inks. Uh, we still need another energy to power up this Lugia. So I'm really, I'm really not sure what we can do. And un unfortunately, he does have a Lysander. Uh, and... <laughs> So, and that, that is the knockout on our Lugia. So at this point, uh, I was pretty sure that that was the game pretty much wrapped up at this point. So I just went and said GG. And uh, I think uh, we still played it out, though. So versus Secret, and we're just going to Lysander up something, just to, just to make him work to get this last knockout here. And so I'll probably just grab uh, Carbank or Metacham seems fine. And so here we're just waiting for an attachment, but we just see a pass. So I'm wondering what is going on here. And we might have actually run our opponent out of energy. If if they don't have another versus seeker for like an AZ or something, we actually, I'm pretty sure, win. Oh, but our opponent has their own N, which will let them shuffle their hand back in. And because of this, it actually puts us, uh, you know, I will actually be lower on cards than my opponent, and we will actually deck out before they do. So, 
it's kind of inevitable at this point, but it's crazy. We were so close to actually pulling out a win uh, against this. <laughs> and there goes the last card of the deck. All our opponent has to do is draw a pass and they win. So, and that is it, guys. Unfortunately, fortunately, we lost by deck out. Uh, so, congrats to our opponent for beating us. That was actually a really good game. Um, that Parallel City really messed us up a lot, though. It really made our board very clunky. You saw we had to, like, promote some Bronzongs at different point, uh, at different points and just kind of wall behind them and let them go down in order to, you know, be able to still use Metal Links on our attackers. So... But anyways, guys, that was the game. I still think the deck is uh, pretty decent. Feel free to try it out, too, and let us know what you think about it. But as usual, feel free to like and subscribe. And don't forget to check out our merch at rarecandytcg.com. And we will see you guys for the next one, okay?